For a goodness of fit test, our null hypothesis is that our random variable follows some predefined distribution, and our alternative hypothesis is that it does not follow that distribution. And so to look at an example, here's a predefined distribution, and it's fatalities by location of injury for motorcycle accidents. So if you die in a motorcycle accident, our distribution says that 57% of the time you had injuries in multiple locations. 31% of the time you had a head injury and so on. So this is our predefined distribution. That would be our null hypothesis is that our random variable follows that distribution. And our alternative hypothesis would be that it follows some other distribution. As with any other hypothesis test, you'll have a level of significance alpha. You'll gather your sample and calculate the test statistic. And if, it's le if the p-value of your test statistic is less than alpha, then you will reject the null hypothesis. An extra step for the goodness of fit test is that you'll need to calculate the expected counts. And I'll go through an example of that. And then you have to make sure these requirements are met for those expected counts in order to use this goodness of fit test. And when you calculate your test statistic, they follow the chi-squared distribution, which on page 589, you can read a brief summary about the characteristics of the chi-squared distribution. So jumping back into our example about motorcycle accidents, we had our predefined distribution, our null hypothesis, and then we took our sample here of 2,065 riders who were not wearing a helmet. And so we're going to see if our sample follows this same distribution, or if there's reason to reject that and accept the alternative hypothesis that riders not wearing a helmet follows a different distribution. So I've loaded that information into StatCrunch, and we need to calculate the expected counts. So I will create a column here called expected counts. And it's in your sample, how many people do you expect to fit into each of these categories? So recall that there is a total of 2,065 riders in our sample. So what we'll want to do is take 2,065 times each of these probabilities to get how many people we expect to fall into each of the categories. In StatCrunch, you would go to Data, Compute, Expression, and you want to build your expression, and you're going to take the number of people in your sample and multiply by your probability. So double click that and hit OK. And it actually created a new column out here for me. I'm going to go ahead and read name that expected count and change that back so I'm not confused but here's my expected counts when I take a sample I would expect this many people to fall into each of the categories here's what I really got when I took the sample the frequency is the actual results from the sample we just took and we can compare those to our expected counts to see how they differ. So now to calculate the test statistic and see if we need to reject the null hypothesis, we need to go to stat, goodness of fit, and chi-squared test. So your observed, uh, the observations from your sample was the frequency, and what you expected is in our column expected count. So hit compute, and you can see your chi-squared column right here. This is your test statistic. And the p-value for that test statistic is very, very small. So this is definitely less than alpha. We would reject our null hypothesis. And so we're accepting our alternative hypothesis that our data follows a different distribution. And this should make sense. Injuries that result in death for people who are wearing a helmet are going to be different than injuries that result in death for people who are not wearing a helmet. So we kind of expect intuitively that those distributions would be different. And one last thing I want to cover with the chi-square distribution. If you go to stat calculators chi-square, you can get a visual picture here. And this is how you can find critical values. So you want to 
enter the correct degrees of freedom. It tells you right here that you have four. And where you get that is it's one less than the number of categories you have. So five categories minus one gives you four degrees of freedom. And then to find your critical values, we're going to want to know how much is in the tail. So we change that to greater than. And then whatever your alpha is, if you want 5% in the tail, put 0.05 there, hit compute. And it gives you the critical value for 4 degrees of freedom and 5% in the tail. So if we were using the classical approach, you compare your test statistic. If it's bigger than this critical value, it means it's farther out in the tail and we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If this was smaller than our critical value, it means we're over here in the heart of the distribution and we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. And now I want to move on to talking about one-way ANOVA. And ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, and this is the method we use to compare three or more means. And our null hypothesis is always going to be that all the means are equal. And our alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is different from the others. We're not specifically saying which one's different, but that at least one is different. And then here are the requirements. This is on page 622. The requirements needed in order to perform an ANOVA test. And it's difficult to verify number four here. And so look at the next page, 623, to see how we do that. And what we're going to do is look at the sample standard deviations. And looking at the samples, make sure the largest sample standard deviation is no more than twice as big as the smallest sample standard deviation. Looking at an example from the homework, if it ever asks about the null and an alternative hypothesis, the null is always that all the means are equal to each other. The alternative is that at least one of them is different. And now I'll show you how to use technology to figure out the F-test statistic. And we'll compare it to alpha to decide whether we reject the null hypothesis or not. So get the data loaded into StatCrunch. Then you want to go to Stat, ANOVA, Analysis of Variance, and One Way. And then select all the columns that you're trying to compare if all those means are the same. And you want to see the plot of residuals. So compute that. And so for each sample, it breaks down the mean and the standard deviation for each of the individual samples. But then down here is your ANOVA table. So here's your test statistic and your p-value. And since p-value here is bigger than alpha, we will not reject our null hypothesis. And to help explain the rest of this table, it's showing how your test statistic is being calculated. This statistic is a fraction, so it has a top part and a bottom part, and this first row is the top part, and the second row is the bottom part. And so the top part is called the MST, or the mean square due to treatment. And it's ba basically measuring the variability between the different samples, between our three samples. And so you get your calculation here. SS stands for sum of the squares. Divide by your degrees of freedom, and it gives you this result here, which is the top part of the fraction. And then the bottom part of the fraction is the MSE or mean squared due to error, and that's the variability within each individual sample. And you get your calculation here, sum of the squares, divide by your degrees of freedom, and you get this result here, which is the bottom part of the fraction. So if you reduce this fraction down, divide the top by the bottom, you get your F test statistic. And so understanding this as a ratio helps explain the concept behind the test, if the top part is a lot bigger than the bottom part, your test statistic is going to be very, very large and will reject the null hypothesis. And what it means when the top's a lot bigger than the bottom is that there is large variability between the samples compared to the variability within each sample. And without going into much detail, that gives you evidence that 
the means are likely not equal and it also gives you a large test statistic so you reject the null hypothesis. A few final things to point out before I wrap up. I noticed that on some of these examples when you're looking at the plot of the residuals here on your homework it had the, uh, the axis flipped and it had the residuals on the bottom and then this normal quartile or the z-values on the y-axis and so comparing these to your answer choices in the homework you're basically looking for the opposite so you would look for here a string that looks like this but above the line and then at this point it goes back below the line so pay attention if it says residuals on the y-axis it should look exactly like this but if your residuals are on the x-axis it'll be flipped there's something similar going on with box plots if you go to graph box plot and then select your three columns there you'll notice that the box plots are vertical in stack crunch and they're horizontal in your homework but you can still just kind of twist twist it to the side and you'll see the same results and be able to uh, compare and choose the right answer and the last thing I want to touch on before we wrap the video up is this requirement that I mentioned earlier in order to use ANOVA you need to make sure that the largest sample standard deviation is no more than twice the smallest sample standard deviation and if you notice from the chart you pull up when you do ANOVA in StatCrunch it shows you the standard deviation so you have that information right here and you just need to verify that the smallest one if you double it it needs to be bigger than the largest one which is the case here so it's okay to use ANOVA. 